There are plenty of things to worry about when working at sea. Deadly waves, terrifying animals, the constant threat of catching hypothermia. But there's one fear that tops the list of anyone working on ships. That is the threat of being hijacked by Somali pirates. Somali pirates have turned East Africa's seas into the world's most dangerous waters. The most feared Somali pirate of all time is a man named Abduwali Muse. But to understand why Abduwali is so feared, we have to go back to 2009. On April 9th, 2009, the cargo ship Maersk, Alabama was sailing through the pirate-infested Indian Ocean. They were 275 miles off the coast of Somalia. They were carrying 17,000 tons of cargo to Mombasa, Kenya. But that's when the ship's captain, Richard Phillips, sees something that sends a chill down his spine. There is an alarming blip on the ship's radar, and it's fast approaching the Maersk, Alabama. Captain Phillips and his crew grab binoculars, and that's when they see it. There are four pirates in a speedboat, and they're approaching first. An alarm is sounded on the ship, and everyone knows that an attack is imminent. The pirates zoom past the Maersk, Alabama, and then double back to match the ship's speed. The inevitability sinks into the crew, and they realize that their biggest fear is about to come true. Their ship is going to be hijacked for ransom by Somali pirates. The pirates throw a grappling hook onto the ship. In just five minutes, pirates are climbing aboard the Maersk, Alabama. The pirates range from ages 18 to 15 years old. Despite them being much younger than the ship's crew, this does not matter. The ship's crew is unarmed, but the Somali pirates all have AK-47s. Captain Phillips plays a final message over the ship's PA system. The 23 crew members can do nothing but listen. As Captain Richard Phillips says, pirates have boarded the ship. I repeat, pirates have boarded the ship. Two pirates board the main deck. They spray bullets into the air, while the other two pirates stay on the speedboat. The ship's third mate, Colin Wright, quickly calls an anti-piracy command center. It's basically 911, but for the sea. Colin tells the man on the phone that the ship has been boarded by pirates. All the phone operator replies with is, oh sh The pirates enter the control area where Captain Phillips is. They hold lots of the crew hostage with AK-47s. The pirates force Captain Phillips to slow the ship down so the other two pirates can climb aboard. Of course, Captain Phillips has no choice but to oblige. The pirates ask the crew where they're from, and that's when the crew says they are a US vessel. As soon as the pirates find out they've hijacked a US ship, they begin to celebrate. They're expecting a big payday. That's because US companies and the US government often pays hijackers a lot of money. And US dollars are worth a lot of money in Somalia. The pirates then tell Captain Phillips to tell everyone to come to the ship's bridge. So he gets on the PA system and does this. He tells all crew to come to the bridge. But the crew don't appear. They know Captain Phillips is simply stalling. That's because Captain Phillips never gives the all clear password. The pirates have now been waiting five minutes and there's still no sign of the crew. They begin to get agitated. But that's when... The entire ship goes dark. The ship's power has gone out. That's because deep in the belly of the ship is engineer Mike Perry. Mike Perry has taken command of the ship and turned off all of the electronics on board. One of the pirates realizes that the crew's engineers are down in the ship's belly. So one of the pirates tells a crew member to guide him down into the ship's belly. He wants to get the other crew members onto the ship's bridge. That way the pirates have all of their hostages in one place. The crew member obliges with the pirate, but convinces him to leave his AK-47 before going into the ship's belly. He says the crew won't come out if they know you're armed. Reluctantly, the pirate agrees. He goes into the ship's belly with the crew member unarmed. He has no idea that waiting down below is engineer Mike Perry, and Mike Perry has a large knife. The pirate and the crew member go down into the ship's belly with flashlights. Engineer Mike Perry soon hears them coming, so he lays in wait in order to ambush the pirate. The pirate walks by and Mike Perry grabs him. 
Because the pirate is unarmed, Mike Perry can jump on him. He holds his knife in hand, but does not have to use it. Mike Perry and the other engineers then tie up the pirate. What they didn't realize was this pirate was the ringleader of all of the pirates. His name was Abduwali Muse, and he was known in the country for being one of the most ruthless pirates in the world. By this time, the US Navy has been notified of the hijacking and they immediately began planning on what they can do. The military decides to deploy their secret weapon, the Navy SEALs. The Navy SEALs are trained for very intense situations, just like this one. But it will be a while before the Navy get there as they're 300 miles away. Back on the Mayersk, Alabama, the ship crew are still terrified. One of the pirates have been captured by the crew, but three remain on board the ship with AK-47s in hand. Chief Engineer Mike Perry is still hiding out in the engine room. Over the radio, he is listening in to what's happening on the ship's bridge. He can hear the other three pirates getting increasingly angry at Captain Phillips. They're also asking where their leader, Abduwali Muse, is, not knowing that he's with the crew in the engine room. The crew now have a hostage of their own, and it's the pirate's leader. The crew are so angry they want to take Abduwali Muse's life, but they realize they can use him as a bargaining chip. Soon, the pirates learn that Muse has been captured by the crew. They tell Captain Phillips this. That's when Captain Phillips has a very brave and selfless idea. He makes the pirates an offer. They can take him as a hostage on a lifeboat and leave the ship. And in exchange, the crew will give back Muse. The pirates take the deal. Muse and the pirates reunite, and get on a lifeboat, but they take their only remaining hostage, Captain Phillips, with them. Captain Richard Phillips' life is now in the pirates' hands. As the pirates leave the ship, chief mate Shane Murphy snaps three incredible photos of the pirates. These are the only known photos of the pirates who are not Muse ever taken. The four pirates, including Muse, now have Captain Phillips at gunpoint, and they're on a lifeboat. The pirates now plan to take Captain Phillips onto the mainland. From there, they can still demand a hefty ransom. The crew is in total panic. They're on the Maersk, Alabama, but their ship's captain is on a lifeboat with four pirates heading to Somalia. Inside the lifeboat, the pirate's leader, Muse, is badly injured. His hand was cut by engineer Mike Perry when he was ambushed, and the cut on Muse's hand is beginning to get infected. Then for the men on the Maersk, Alabama, a welcome sight is seen. The USS Bainbridge is approaching them rapidly. The USS Bainbridge is a US Navy missile destroyer. It's there to rescue the crew. Aboard the Bainbridge are the highest trained US Navy SEALs. The Navy SEALs knew that the hard part starts now. They had to somehow rescue Captain Phillips from the lifeboat. The only problem was on the lifeboat were four pirates armed with AK-47s. I've obtained real footage from the US Navy of their rescue mission. This is the lifeboat as it heads to the Somali coast. If the pirates got Captain Phillips ashore, then they could take him anywhere. That's when Captain Phillips sees an opportunity to make a break for it. He jumps off the lifeboat into the ocean, but it's no use. The USS Bainbridge is more than a half mile away, and he is quickly recaptured by the pirates and taken back on board the lifeboat. The Navy don't want the lifeboat to get to the Somali coast, so the Navy does something unorthodox. They begin to use fire hoses to push the ship away from the coast. They then use a Navy helicopter and fly it over the lifeboat. This creates hurricane force winds, and it means the lifeboat can't move around. But this is merely a stalling tactic, and it does nothing to rescue Captain Phillips. The pirates and Captain Phillips have now been on the lifeboat for 83 hours. The pirates are beginning to get desperate. They send a message to the Navy. They're asking for food and water, and also medical attention for their leader, Abduwali Muse. The wound on his hand is getting worse and worse. This is the exact thing the Navy's hostage negotiators have been waiting for. The Navy SEALs say they will give them food and water, in exchange for Muse coming aboard their ship. Muse knows this means he will be arrested by US authorities, but he realizes that if he doesn't do this, then the wound on his hand will get infected, and he will soon not be alive. 
Now Muse is aboard the US Spain Bridge, but the three other pirates and Captain Phillips are still aboard the lifeboat. The US Navy realizes there's no other way. The SEAL team calls three snipers into place. One sniper per pirate on the lifeboat. The SEAL team will have to snipe all of the pirates simultaneously, but not hit Captain Phillips. Luckily Captain Phillips was being smart. For the entire 86 hours he stayed in the same spot on the lifeboat. Two of the SEAL team snipers lock on to two of the pirates. But the third sniper does not know the position of the third pirate. Luckily that's when the pirate's lifeboat runs out of fuel. The lifeboat is now moving around erratically because of the waves. That's when the third pirate gets seasick and sticks his head out of the window. The three SEAL snipers must coordinate three simultaneous shots. They also need to make sure they're headshots. They don't want a situation where a pirate is injured and can still pull the trigger on their AK-47 ending Captain Phillips' life. As soon as the third pirate puts his head out of the window to be seasick, the third SEAL communicates. He says two words to the other SEAL snipers, target acquired. Like clockwork, the three snipers shoot their shots, and the three pirates go down. Captain Phillips can now be rescued from the lifeboat. Captain Phillips is brought home to the USA, and Abduwali Muse is also brought to the USA for trial. He is escorted by two Navy SEALs with their faces blurred out by the military. The military have never identified these Navy SEALs. That's because they could be in danger if people knew the nature of their job. It just shows how dangerous a person Abduwali Muse really is. Abduwali Muse is taken to New York. At the time, he was only 18 years old. On May 19th, 2009, a grand jury convicts Muse. He is found guilty of hijacking, kidnapping, and hostage taking. The charges of piracy and possession of a machine gun are dropped in exchange for a guilty plea. Muse is sentenced to 35 years in federal prison. But as he leaves court, a shocking sight is seen. Muse appears to be laughing at the FBI. He shows absolutely no remorse and no fear. And this cements him as one of the most feared Somali pirates to ever live. Muse is currently being held at a maximum security prison in Indiana. It's believed he will be released in 2038. You have to hand it to Captain Phillips for his amazing bravery. He was able to get his crew members out of harm's way, while sacrificing his own safety. But in the end, no crew members of the Maersk Alabama were injured. None of the Navy SEALs were injured either. Out of the four hijackers, three were sniped by US Navy SEALs, and their ringleader was arrested and taken to prison. Leave me your thoughts in the comments section about what Captain Phillips did. Do you think he was being smart and brave, or was he being reckless? If you've made it this far, then thank you for watching. I've been Charlie, and you've been awesome. There are some more videos you will love on screen right now. Leave me a like rating if you enjoyed. And if you haven't already, then what are you waiting for? Subscribe to Top 10s.